Are we ready? <clears throat> Brian? Good evening. We will call our regularly scheduled uh, meeting to order, and we will begin with an invocation. And uh, Father Balta, with Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church, uh, has agreed graciously. And while he makes his way here, we'll uh, um, to the microphone. We'll um, uh, follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. And if all of you would uh, stand with me, please, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father, we thank you that you promised us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in their midst. Lord Jesus, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Heavenly Father, we come to you today as members of the Homewood Council members asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, O Lord God, as we make decisions that might affect and improve the life standards of the people in Homewood. Continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future, and the rights and needs of both individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts here today, may we act wisely and well. Jesus, open our spirits and minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom and your wonderful love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, thank you, sir. Ms. Salter, roll call, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Gwaltney? Here. Mr. Thames? Here. Mr. Higginbotham? Here. Mr. Wolverton? Here. Mr. McCleskey? Mr. Jones? Here. Mrs. Smith? Here. Mr. Wyatt? Here. Mrs. Andrus? Here. Mr. Wright? Here. And Mr. Limbaugh? Here. So we have a quorum. Uh, we're going to carry over the reading of the minutes from uh, September 18th and uh, council meeting of September 25th. Uh, we've got a couple of board vac vacancies that we need to address. 
the uh, Ward 4 Abatement Board, do you have a... Yes, um, we would like to uh, appoint Ms. Frances Allison to the Ward 4 Abatement Board position. All right, so we have a um, motion for Ms. Smith. Do we have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wyatt. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And um, Ms. Salter, if you'll let Ms. Allison know. Yes, sir. We appreciate her willingness to serve. And also there is a uh, Homewood Environmental Commission at large position. And I understand we had an applicant for that. And yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, the the um, application period, of course, closed for that today. And we did have one applicant, uh, Mrs. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this last name, but Amber Custos, K-U-S-T-O-S. I think you're correct. Um, well, that's good enough for me, Mr. Chairman. Um, she, <laughs> she, uh, she is the coordinator for environmental stewardship and campus enhancement at Samford University. So I would uh, suggest that she is qualified, obviously, to, to be on the commission, and I would place her name and nomination. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Ms. Andrus. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that, too, is unanimous. And if you'll let her know also. So that's a good thing. All right. Uh, we've got two additions to the um, agenda for tonight. Both are committee referral agenda items. Uh, one is 131017, which is request for consideration of a resolution to request that the Alabama legislature take action relieving the city of Homewood from the application of the lid bill. This is requested by Alex Wyatt and will be referred to finance. Uh, the second item is 141017, which is a request for consideration for a directional change to one way for Reese Street. This will be referred to uh, planning and development, requested by Mr. Thames. Uh, are there any other items to add? If there are not, uh, Chair would welcome a motion and a second for modification. I'll move. Second. Motion from Mr. Wright, second from Ms. Andrus. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. I just want to, uh, for the record, uh, the past two meetings we had, we averaged about 50 uh, of these uh, <laughs> uh, additions. To, so two is really is exciting tonight. So, and, and Mr. Wright did a great job of uh, negotiating those uh, yeah, 50 items. Please don't blame the sitting president for the number of <laughs> amendments that took place. So. So anyway, sorry to delay the vote. I just wanted to make that comment that this is really well, exciting tonight. you know, I certainly have some comments to make at the end about Mr. Wright's uh, uh, holding of this chair, but we'll save that. Okay, anyway, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, good. All right, let's move on to the um, consent agenda. Chair would welcome a motion. Move to approve. Motion Second. for Mr. Jones. Second. Second for Ms. Smith. All in favor of approval signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is unanimous. All right. Uh, old business. 120517 requests a uh, public hearing set for. November 13th, 2017 at 6 p.m. for consideration of a petition of annexation for the property located at 1400 Shades Crest Road requested by Melba Kane, Jolene Mills, and our city clerk. And this was carried over from 918-17 for uh, public hearing. So that is set. And 1908-17, um, request for consideration of changing the construction working hours defined in section 5.9.1 regulations concerning the issuance of building and construction permits requested by Andy Gwaltney. Um, are, does p and have a report for this? Yes, sir. Uh, me, Matt, and uh, recommended approval changing. All right. Changing uh, construction hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays with special approval needed for exterior Sunday hours. Uh, Councilor Andrus seconded. I'm not sure who motioned in the first place. It was 5 to 0 vote. And if Mr. Qualney has anything to add. No, I emailed the uh, summary of the changes to everybody last week. And if you have any questions, I'll provide it. The, the summary that you sent in indicated there'd be no work on Sunday without written. Yeah. It, it didn't distinguish between the exterior and the 
into it. Yeah, the, the way it reads, I copied the verbiage from the, the uh, ordinance I drafted. So all work is exterior and interior is prohibited on Sunday unless it, all work outside those hours has been had to be the Okay. Um, so, Mr. Kendrick, does that mean we've got an ordinance ready? Or yes, sir, we do. That's what the ordinance that was sent to you says. Okay, good. But I wanted to make sure that that's what you wanted. Yes. All right, good. First reading, sir. It's an ordinance to modify Section 5-9-1 entitled Regulations concerning the Issuance of Building and Construction Permits. The sole change, and I'll read that, all of the provisions of the existing ordinance say, remain the same except all permits will have this following legend all work exterior and interior authorized under this permit shall be performed only between the hours of 7 a.m and 7 p.m on monday through friday 8 a.m and 3 p.m on saturday and sunday all work is prohibited unless written exception is granted by the building inspector or other official of the city of homewood application for exception must be made to the building inspector of the city of homewood all of the provisions of that section remain in full force and effect other than as specifically <coughs> read before Section three, if any part of provision of the ordinance declared to be unconstitutional or invalid by a court of competent jurisdiction, all other provisions remain in full force and effect. Uh, section four, if any rules or regulation are in conflict with the provisions of this amendment, uh, they have declared null and void. Section five, that the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption by the city council. Thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Uh, chair would welcome a motion and a second for unanimous consent. Second. Motion from Mr. Jones, second from Mr. Higginbotham. Uh, Ms. Salter, roll call. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Thames? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Wyatt? Yes. Mrs. Andres? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. And Mr. Limbaugh? Yes. Um, and so this will be uh, Ordinance 2672. And the chair would welcome a motion in a second for adoption. Second. Motion from Mr. Gwaltney, second from Mr. Thames. Uh, roll call, Ms. Salter. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Thames? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Wyatt? Yes. Mrs. Andres? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Yes. And Mr. Limbaugh? Yes. So this is a. Uh, passed on a 10-0 vote and we will move on to 060917 uh, public hearing set for tonight for consideration to set a public hearing to consider declaring the property located at 1801 Kensington Road uh, a public nuisance due to violations of ordinances 1910 and 1750 excessive growth and uh, we will start with a report from Mr. Scott Mr. Cook all right, uh, notices were sent out. Uh, the owner is a, uh, Barbara Statham uh, at River Ford Circle in Hoover. Uh, the notice was sent out and signed for, uh, declare, uh, noticing them that the property was uh, up for discussion as far as declaring it a public nuisance. Um, the last letter that went, went out, I have not got confirmation back on it, but uh, it went out uh, letting them know of tonight's public hearing. Uh, you should have the pictures in front of you. Uh, I guess on the screen there the front front yard has been addressed to some extent that's not the big issue the big issue is the backyard that has had very little done to it all right thank you sir we will open this public hearing and ask is there anyone that would like to uh, speak to this matter yes ma'am come, come forward we need uh, we need you to uh, give your uh, name and your address here with Ms. Salter right and then you're welcome to speak. Mr. Cook, if you'll turn the floor over to her.
If you wait, uh, let's pull the microphone down a little bit. In your name and where you live? I'm Beth Wilson. I live at 1803 Kensington Road, which is okay. the house to the left of uh, the Statham property. And um, it, there's definitely an overgrowth of weeds, which the council has recognized. Uh, the backyard. Um, there's also insects and rodents. There's now trash along the sidewalk and along the driveway. Uh, the soap is falling in, and part of the siding is also down. So there's more than just an <clears throat> issue of overgrowth. Do you know if the home's currently, um, if anyone's living there? If no one's lived there for over two years. Okay. And the last I talked to Mrs. Statham, I don't think she was probably um, her all of her mental faculties together. So, I see. Um, you know, it's become a, a, a problem for me personally because I am the next door neighbor. I've had to pay extra to get, um, you know, weed, vine treatment, grass treatment. The fence is starting to fall in. I've been told there's nothing I can do because the fence is on her property. There's a large tree that's growing at an angle over my house. Uh, there's a concern that it's a hazard. I've already had one neighbor's tree fall on my house and do 28,000 in damage. And this tree is significantly large as well. So as well as the, the, the public matter, which affects a number of my neighbors back there. I mean, there are also issues that affect me being the next door neighbor. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. I appreciate that information. What is the next step? Well, we're, we're going to uh, see what Mr. Cook's recommendation is. And then the council will uh, consider uh, um, declaring it a nuisance and we'll go from there okay we have we, we have a a clearly defined legal process we have to follow how do i find out what that process is? well you're going to find out in just a few minutes okay yes ma'am mr president can, I, can we ask a couple questions okay. sure um d d do you know who the owner is or the family has yeah. any of the family members mr cook Scott's just identified us. him he's found them he knows oh, you did are. and yeah and they are not responding. Well, they sent over. They for one of the certified letters. They've done some. They sent some people over to do some cleanup in the front lawn. Okay. That's about I it. I towed a vehicle off the property last week, and they were sent certified letters as well. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Next. Don Demetz. I'm at 1800 Kensington which is directly across the street from the property under consideration. I'll appreciate you getting the car to, uh, towed away because I consider that a threat to the livelihood of my house, my family, and anybody walking by the street because it, as you can probably see, there's a steep hill. That car was parked there for in excess of a year, probably multiple years. And it always concerned me that the brakes would give out one day and the car would come rolling down sure. and take a child or a pedestrian out. So thank you very much for getting that. But um, yes, the, I mean, I think it, I don't know if public nuisance has a legal definition. It probably does. But it does. Uh, I would think that by looking at the property, you can see it is a public nuisance. They did come by <coughs> maybe a month and a half or two months ago and do some cleanup, but it was somewhat cursory and hasn't been cleaned since then. Um, you know, it's a mess and it's not getting any better. It won't get any better unless, uh, you know, the family that owns the property can be encouraged to come out <laughs> and do something. Um, um, you yeah. uh, our neighbors next door had their house <laughs> you know, for sale for over a million dollars. I'm thinking, you know, anybody right. coming up to buy, you know, spend a million dollars on the <clears> house will drive directly by this house. It looks like it could be on the verge of uh, falling down. So it's definitely, I think, detracted from from uh, the neighborhood, which is generally nice. So anyway, I, this, I would be in full support of having the property declared public nuisance. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to this matter? If not, um, we will.
close this public hearing. Mr. Cook, what would be your recommendation? Uh, to declare it a public nuisance, but just, just so that the neighbors will know that all we can do is go on the property and, and clean up the excessive growth and I'll take care of the litter as well. You know, it's, it's not going to look like the rest of the neighborhood when we get through, but it will be a big improvement and, um, and, and they'll do a good job. Thank you, Mr. Cook. We appreciate that. Hey, Scott. <clears throat> I do have one quick question for him, um, just because we've been dealing with this for a long time, <laughs> yes. haven't we, Scott? Um, they're up to date on taxes, as far as we know, correct? Yes. They they're, are currently They're maintaining taxes, the taxes yes. on the property. Um, we got the car hauled away. Right. Um, have they expressed any? No contact with no me con whatsoever. They, they just signed for the letters and sent yeah. the two guys. Send somebody out, do the front yard, and off they go. Yeah. While you were on site, I know you were looking for excessive growth, but what about structurally? How does the house look, or is it open at all to the? It does not appear to be open. Uh, when I was up there today, there is a light on in the house, so there's still electricity on. Um, the the gutters are full of debris. Um, there is some probably some siding issues with decay, falling, um, but that's that's about it. Structurally, it's still a good sound house. I'm sure it doesn't look good on inside. <laughs> Mr. Cook, can you ascertain uh, whether other utilities are in there or not? Well, like I say, I know the power's on. Well, I know the power is, but I'm yeah, obviously thinking about water. And uh, I mean, I could go to the street and look at the, <clears throat> see if the meter's still in place or taken out. That's about it. If you call the water works, they don't give you that information. It's kind of a privacy <clears throat> thing, whether somebody's paying their bill or not. But you can ascertain that yeah. with a little investigation. Yeah, I Good. can. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. Can I, yeah. Yes, sir. Is, is the city able to do anything about, <clears throat> about the tree that was mentioned? Personally, I don't think so. Um, that's an issue between two property owners. Um, you know, I've, I've not playing attorney here, but I've in the past recommended that the property owner who's fearful that this tree might fall on them just send a certified letter to them, <coughs> letting them know of the possible danger. Unfortunately, it's a private matter. Yeah. Yeah. Between two property owners, I understand the concern, but there's nothing legally that the city can do for public on private property other than the statutory remedies that the state legislature gives us to clean up weeds and bushes and things like that. Certainly, you may well be served to write them a letter, put them on notice so that if something does fall, then you can have maybe possibly a claim against them. Otherwise, if it's an act of God, the insurance company treated it as your problem, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank but, you, Mr. Cook. All right. But, but to elaborate on the process, you know, after we clean it up, and maybe, Scott, you can march through this, I mean, there's a cost that's incurred for doing that. That's correct. Once once we clean it up, then, then we'll tabulate you know the hours man hours and the cost um, the city it, it adds another 50 percent to that we send a bill out to the owner giving them 30 days to pay it if they don't pay it then i'll be we're coming back to y'all through, through the city clerk to place that lien as a weed lien on the property tax okay Thank you. all right council you've heard uh, mr cook's recommendation Chair would welcome a motion and a second. I would move to um, approve this house being declared a public nuisance. All right. We have a motion for Ms. Smith. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. Second for Mr. Wyatt. Any further discussion? If there's none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is unanimous, and that will be resolution 17167. And uh, um, your charge is is uh to go forth mr cook on thank that. you scott right. when will that happen when will the when will the crew be able to get out there probably i'll just have to get with them get on their schedule. And notify them that y'all declared a public nuisance and they'll just work it in their schedule when they can okay thank you thank you sir mm -hmm. 070917 public hearing set for tonight for consideration to set a public hearing to excuse me for consideration <coughs> to consider declaring the property located at 1000 forest Brook Drive, a public nuisance due to violation of the ordinances uh, 1910 and 1750 excessive growth. Uh, we'll start with you, Mr. Cook. All right, sir. Uh, yes, this property um, was has been vacant for probably over a year now. It's mm -hmm. my understanding it was for sale. Uh, this is the second time that I've sent them notice. 
uh, this the second time uh, both uh, certified letters came back undeliverable um, since the time that I brought it to y'all's attention the <coughs> house has sold and a new owner has come in and taken care of the front yard or the whole yard oh, wow. and doing a remodeling job on the inside so uh, that's a good thing yes all right so we will open this public hearing is there anyone here that wants to say anything about this there being none we will close this public hearing and hear your recommendations uh, motion sir. to drop Make a recommendation okay. to drop, excuse me. All right, so council, you hear Mr. Cook's recommendation. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion from Ms. Andrews, second. Mr. Chairman, if I could just make one comment before sure. we vote. Uh, I, I want to thank Mr. Cook for his help with this. I have been bothering him with this house. This, no, is, no this house has been a persistent problem for two years, long before I was on the council. As community president, I went out there and cut the grass myself one time because there were so wow. many complaints about the house. And so, um, I am very hopeful that the new owner will take their responsibilities as a homeowner and homewood a little bit more seriously than the previous owners. So uh, I thank you, Mr. Cook, though, sure. for your diligence. You're on it. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. So again, we have a motion from Ms. Andrews. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Wolverton. Uh, any further discussion? Thank you for what you've done, Mr. Higginbotham. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is unanimous, and that is 17168. We'll move on to 080917, public hearing set for tonight to consider the property located at 1602 Ridge Road, a public nuisance due to a violation of ordinances 1910 and 1750, excessive growth. Mr. Cook. Uh, yes, sir. Um, the property is owned by a James Dobbs at 1602 Ridge Road. The taxes are being paid by Turner Farms LLC out of Birmingham. Um, notice was sent to both parties um, of, of tonight's hearing. Uh, both parties signed for their uh, certified letter. Um, this is the, I believe the third time that uh, I've come before y'all on this property. Uh, I think twice before uh, the city declared a public nuisance and we went up there and took care of it. Uh, Mr. Dobbs uh, did call me today and wanted to meet with me, which I did prior to the council meeting. Um, he wanted me to express his concern that um, he would like to have till December to take care of the property, make sure that it's uh, done. Um, he is um, on a fixed income and living back in the house now. and. Um, he did not feel like he should come up before y'all and speak for himself, so he asked me to just, you know, ask that you give him till December. Thank you, Mr. Cook. All right, let us open this public hearing and ask, is there anyone else who would like to speak to this? There being none, um, we will close this public hearing and ask Mr. Cook for his recommendation. I was afraid you was going to ask me that. <laughs> that's you that's part of your. Uh, <laughs> you can throw it back to that's us. That's in your job to. description. That's true. <laughs> Just if you want to, you can point at us. And we'll <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, under the circumstances, I mean, I mean, the yard is is continuously been a problem. Neighbors have complained for years and years. Um, I, I don't see where it can be done in, by December. Um, I mean, it's, it, it'd probably be tough for us to even get out there and get some of this done by December for the full crew. But uh, anyway, so my recommendation would be go ahead and declare it a public nuisance. You said this, has this been the same owner the previous yes. two times? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And Bruce, if you don't mind, can I address this as well? Sure. Um, Scott and Alex and I have been dealing with this for the several past several years with regular complaints from neighbors all around the property he is living in the house with no electricity and no water service um, we've had the health department go out he did not allow them on the property so um, that did not go our way we we have been working diligently to try to do something about this and he's not going to do it by December so we need to declare this a nuisance and see what else we can do to address this for the neighbors because it's a problem all right anyone else want to speak to this matter on the council yeah I have a, a question you mentioned Turner Farms yes <laughs> what is their position who are they now 
Do they it, own the property? No. No, the owner is Mr. Dobbs. Okay, it the owner is Mr. It Dobbs. It appears okay. that Mr. Dobbs was unable to pay his property taxes at one time. So an investor purchased, paid his property taxes for him and has a property tax lien on the property themselves. So since they have an interest in the property, I have to send them gotcha. notice as well. Okay. All right, so they just have a property tax lien. On. Right. All right, and has, um, I just mentioned this, you know, DHR could be contacted, and maybe y'all have already done that, Barry, so I'm sorry if I mentioned that. Uh, no, we thought when we started the health department, we thought that might be our avenue to getting DHR involved because we felt like they would have an obligation, knowing that he's living there in those kind of conditions to notify DHR, but when he didn't allow them on the property, they left and aren't going back. So um, I guess that now becomes incumbent on us to call DHR, and I'm not sure how that process would work. That'll be new to me, but I'll start digging. <laughs> <laughs> we're learning all kinds of new things, aren't That's we, Scott? Correct. But that is one of the things we're <coughs> looking into. Well, it could be that, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll obviously will defer to you lovely Ward 4 representatives and <laughs> <laughs> but the adjacent property owners may want to get DHR to come look in there. Um, so, okay. Thank Would you. that be the process? Well, you gotta have you gotta have a petition. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. there's three attorneys yeah. in this in this uh, <laughs> presence. So, well, if the house is not habitable, it can, we, we can order them out. The health department here they would like to go on the property. The reason they didn't do that is because they typically don't, not because they can't. And I, I suggested to them, hey, they're, if you. They're very rarely helpful to anyone. I, I suggest to them next, you know, in the future, call the police department. You know, we'll be glad to escort them. Mm -hmm. The yeah. habitability of the house is an issue. The building inspection have a right on the property to review that. Well, why it's it. It's unsafe or dilapidated. We can then take some action. But short of that kind of finding, in the opinion that it's unsafe, then we have really no other option other than. Well, Wyatt and Nick Hill have been out to the property. Um, Nick told him, told Mr. Dobbs that he would not allow the fire department to enter the house because it's unsafe if there were to be some sort of thing. No, I mean, they did go on the premises. That's what I'm telling you. He told Mr. Dobbs that he wouldn't allow his firefighters to go into the house because of the dangerous conditions of the house. Well, then it might be unhabitable. I'm not confident to tell you that. Yeah. And, and Mike, if necessary, um, one of these interested parties, to, they can go out there with law enforcement to, sure. to make sure they gain access in a proper manner, right? Sure. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion? Motion to declare a public nuisance. Second. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Wyatt. Uh, any further discussion? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And this will be resolution 17169, That's and it is. We don't have a resolution on the document. We don't? No, it's just, it's just dropped from the beginning. Okay. The resolution will only take some action. But I thought we. Just took it. We did. We the declared the one before that we dropped. The one you dropped. Oh, that's right. So it's 168. Oh, right. I'm sorry. You're you're right. My fault. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you keeping me straight. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cook. 100917 public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a variance to the sign ordinance at 1745 Oxmoor Road. Requested by Alex Wyatt. Report from special issues. Who's reporting out special That's me. Issues? I'm sorry. I was talking to Mr. Wyatt. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Um, we met as a committee last Monday night, and uh, this is the property that's going to be, or is already, um, a Pilates studio on um, Oxmoor Road. Uh, the owners met with uh, concerned neighbors um, from Mayfair Circle about the size of that sign, uh, and they came to a, an agreement about the size, and uh, we sent it out without recommendation pending the public hearing tonight. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Five to zero, sorry. We will open this public hearing and certainly ask anyone who would like to address this to come forward.
Yes, ma'am. And your name is? Uh, my name is Tish Tillis. I'm one of the partners uh, at Studio G Pilates. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we requested a five and a half foot sign um, based on the fact that uh, the way the property is at a slope uh, with a monument sign, it doesn't sit up very high and you can't see it very well from the street. Um, we came forward uh, several months ago and um, the property owners at Mayfair said they would uh, agree to a four and a half foot sign. So we went and had our sign company mock up a four and a half foot sign and it really kind of um, depleted what we were looking for within the sign. So we had him do a mock up of the five and a half foot sign. We placed it in the area where the sign will be um, uh, built and had the Mayfair residents come over. Um, when they stood at the exit of Mayfair and where our sign was, they noticed they couldn't even see um, the, the five and a half foot sign because of the bushes that were built there. So they told us they no longer had an issue with it and they would not fight the variance. Do you have a copy of the sign? Um, I th I th we had it at the meeting. I don't know <coughs> if we have it to show on the screen. It's a circular sign, so that's why the size. Yeah. yeah um, Mr. Kendrick has to have a copy. Yes, we do have. A, do we have a copy from the meeting on Monday night? I'll have to check and see that not. I can. Okay. We may have to ask you to get us another copy. Okay, of I can that. send okay. another copy. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say about that? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. it, ma'am. Anyone else? All right, if there's no one else, then we will close this public hearing. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is unanimous, and that will be resolution 169. All right, 1309-17, uh, request for consideration for phase two Greenway project uh, requested by Jennifer Andrus, referred from Public Works on 925-17, and a report from Finance, Ms. Smith. Um, yes, the Finance Committee met last Monday night and uh, voted 4-0 to zero to recommend approval of the $5,500 um, from the capital budget Greenway line, Greenway line item to acquire, to acquire track number 7 in the right-of-way. Um, this is an 80-20, part of the 80-20 grant match. Uh, motion was made by Mr. Higginbotham, seconded by Councilor Thames, and again, that was 4-0 to zero coming out of finance to approve that expenditure. All right, thank you. Um, so therefore, we have a motion from finance. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Ms. Uh, Andrus. And uh, any further discussion? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And that is uh, resolution 17170, and it is approved <laughs> unanimously. We'll move on to 150917, request for consideration of traffic and safety concerns on Kent Drive. Requested by Andrew Wolverton, uh, carried over from 925-17. And we will start with a report from public safety. And who is doing that with? I'm covering that tonight. Uh, <coughs> yes, Mr. sir. Um, we met and uh, heard from Ms. McGrath about some recommendations for locations for uh, crosswalks, uh, specifically uh, this ordinance would address uh, Cobb Street and South Point, Cobb and Southwood, Kent and Cobb, Allen and Grove, Kent and Montgomery. Uh, in addition, um, we discussed uh, holding meetings with the, uh, with the school about resource officers and, and perhaps a better way to move children through the area. We also uh, recommended a traffic study in the area to see if there's any changes that could be made uh, to help flow. Um, and recommended uh, adding patrols until uh, this resolution was passed, adding the uh, crosswalks. Uh, Councilor Wolverton motioned and was, that's twice now, I only have my second on here. I don't know who the first was, <laughs> but someone made a motion. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Dane. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we appreciate you stepping up in uh, Mr. McCluskey's absence. Sure. And um, Mr. Kendrick. Yes, sir. This is an ordinance to provide for the installation of five additional protesting crosswalks across Cobb Street, Kent Drive, Allen <coughs> Avenue, and Kent Lane as described here and below. Be run by the City Council as follows. The Chief of Police shall be directed to install five pedestrian crosswalks at the lo locations described here and below 
and as directed by the Chief of Police. A, the pedestrian crosswalk across Cobb Street in order to pr provide access to the sidewalk connecting Cobb Street with South Point Drive as depicted in Exhibit A. B, a pedestrian crosswalk across Cobb Street in order to provide access to the sidewalk connecting Southwood Road to Cobb Drive as described in Exhibit A. C, a pedestrian crosswalk across Kent Drive at the intersection of Kent Drive with Cobb Street as depicted in Exhibit A. D, and a, a pedestrian crosswalk across Allen Avenue at the intersection of Allen Avenue with Grove Street as depicted in Exhibit A. And E, a pedestrian crosswalk across Kent Lane in order to provide access to the sidewalk connecting Kent Lane with Kent, excuse me, Montgomery Lane with Kent Lane as described in Exhibit A. Section two, that all drivers of motor vehicles as defined in the highway code shall yield to pedestrian located within the crosswalk as defined here and above. Three, that any provision, person found guilty of violation of the provision of this order shall be punished as provided by section 1-8 of the Code of Ordinances as amended. Section four, that all ordinances contrary to the provisions of this ordinance are specifically repealed. Section five, any part of provision of the order declared to be unconstitutional by the Court of Common Jurisdiction, all other parts of provision of the order shall remain in full force and effect. Section six, the, six, the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption by the City Council approval by the mayors or as otherwise becoming law. Thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Roll call, please, ma'am. No. We got a motion for No, unanimous. I'm sorry. Motion for unanimous consent with a second. So moved. Second. Motion for Ms. Smith, second for Mr. White. Excuse me. Sleep deprivation. A roll call. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Thames? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Wyatt? Yes. Mrs. Andres? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. And Mr. Limbaugh? Yes. So this will be Ordinance 2673, and the Chair would uh, welcome a motion and a second for adoption. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, before, before I make a motion, um, I just want to be clear. So the what we're voting on is the ordinance that was read tonight in addition to all the other items that came out of public safety. Is that correct? Approval of everything that came out we're, of public safety. No, we're we're voting on an ordinance, an approval of the ordinance strictly. Yes, at this point. Addressing the crosswalk. Addressing the crosswalk. Right. Are the other items going to be coming up at another time? Or? I think those are recommendations, and it's upon the council to make those happen. The meeting with the schools. Uh, the 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 approval of the ordinance is the first step. Is what my understanding is now. Uh, uh, if we're talking about a traffic study, we need to address that with uh, uh, the Finance Committee, certainly. And uh, uh, I do think we need to schedule a meeting as expeditiously as we can with uh, the school officials. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess my concern is I just want to make sure that we, we don't let um, the other items that were discussed uh, fall through the cracks. And, uh, I, I think this ordinance is great and I think we need all these crosswalks don't get me wrong just want to make sure that we do work on the other items that are in there and if there's something I need to do specifically to expedite that I I would appreciate any direction from the chair as to what that would be okay um, I agree with you mr. Higginbotham and what we'll do is we'll reach out to um, the uh, uh, school officials first and then we'll uh, certainly talk with the chief and uh, um, lastly, look at uh, the funding of a traffic study, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Didn't, right. just to clarify, didn't we leave carry, leave part of this in committee as well? Yes, it's yes. carried over in committee it's as well. It's carried over, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so the, that's, the item won't go you. away. Thank you. I wasn't here. I didn't know that. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, so let, back to 2673, a motion and a second for adoption. So moved. Motion from Mr. Higginbotham. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. White. All right, roll call, please, ma'am. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Thames? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Wyatt? Yes. Mrs. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mr. Limbaugh? Yes, so that is a unanimous 10-0. 2673 <coughs> is passed. All right, 1809-17, request to approve expenditures of Exhibit A. From HPM Management on behalf of the Board of Education from Construction Fund, Mr. Jones carried over from 925. Report from Finance, Ms. Smith. Well, I would like to request that we carry this over again. Um, pending, we have a meeting coming up on Thursday uh, between Ms. Salter and JJ and some of the school's officials. Um, so I would uh, ask that we carry this over so that we can let them have that meeting. And so done. We'll carry it over, okay? Thank you. Thank you. 
1909-17, request for consideration of an ABC 050 retail beer off-premises only and an ABC 070 retail table wine off-premises for M&A International Market LLC DBA uh, M&A International Market located at 250 Green Springs Highway requested by Melody Salter, our city clerk, uh, public safety, Mr. Thames. Yes, sir. The uh, committee... The committee met and uh, voted four to zero, recommending approval. Uh, motion by, made by Councillor Wyatt, seconded by Councillor Andrews. All right. Um, so, therefore, the, again, that's a motion from public safety. And uh, any further discussion on that particular item? There being none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that too is passed unanimously. Okay. Uh, 230917, public hearing set for October 23rd at 6 p.m. for consideration of a variance to the sign ordinance at 1760 Oxmoor Road. Um, Vanessa McGrath and requested by, and we will carry this over for the public hearing set. Therefore. 250917, request for consideration for ADA transition plan, uh, request by Vanessa McGrath in our BEZ department. Report from P&D, Mr. Thames. Yes, sir. Uh, the committee heard from Nathan Curie of Sane Associates uh, regarding the um, sidewalk repair for compliance. Uh, Councilor Andrews made a motion to recommend setting a public hearing tonight. Uh, which was required. Uh, it was seconded by Mr. Wyatt, and it was four to zero vote. All right, so we have the motion from planning and development. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Limbaugh, based on the recommendation and the part of the plan, that public hearing would be scheduled at least 30 days from now, so that'd be November 13th. So you're saying that the, the public hearing Okay, were we setting, I'm sorry, were we setting a public hearing? Yes. yes. Okay. The, their, their report recommends a public uh, time for public input. And they, then we will set that for November 13th, 13th 2017 at 6 p.m., okay? All right, thank you. you, you have this plan. All right, committee referral agenda. Chair would welcome a motion and a second for approval. Second. Motion from Mr. Higginbotham, second from? Second. Ms. Smith. All in favor, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So be it. We'll move on to uh, other new business. Uh, request to set a public hearing and referral to special issues for consideration of a variance to the sign ordinance at 112 Hollywood Boulevard. Requested by uh, Christopher Allison, Wyatt Pugh, Greg Cobb, our BZ department. And we will set that public hearing for 08-10-17 on the 23rd of October at 6 p.m. All right, 091017, request for consideration to set a public hearing to declare property located at 2900 16th Place South, a public nuisance due to a violation of ordinances 1910 and 1750, excessive growth, requested by Mr. Scott Cook, our code enforcement with the police department, and that too will be set for October 23rd, 2017 at 6 p.m. All right, 10, 10, 17, request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with Homewood Chamber of Commerce for fiscal year 17, 18 services and funding requested by Melody Salter, our finance director. Uh, I will point out that this is already part of the budget for 2017, 2018, and the chair would welcome a motion and a second. So moved. Motion from Mr. Wyatt. Second, second from Mr. Thames. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is resolution 171. Is that correct? That's what I got. And that's what I've got. And that is passed unanimously. We will move on to 111017. Quest to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with Jetty Trip Media for fiscal year 1718 website and social media services requested by Brian Wallace. Melody Salter, our finance director. Chair would welcome a motion and a second. Second. Motion from Mr. Gwaltney, second from Ms. Smith. 
Or was it? Hmm? <laughs> Two or three of y'all. I it just was, picked them. Bruce, it was actually me. Okay. <laughs> Who was Mr. Wright? You missed him earlier well, today. I, yeah. It, there's your birthday oh, gift for me, sir. Second, and Barry was trying to take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want for the record. Thank you, sir. All right, all in favor, please signify by saying aye to get me out of this. Aye. Aye, and that is 17172. Finally, 121017, request for consideration of approval of vouchers for a period of September 25th, 2017 through October 8th, 2017, requested by our, our city treasurer and the finance committee, Ms. Smith. No, now, this sorry. is another uh, birthday present <laughs> uh, for Mr. Okay. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please step right in. I had a happy Sunday. Um, and um, so it has come back around to me, unfortunately. Um, it has. <laughs> but, it's all about um, you, sir. A big thanks to Melody. Um, I had a question. We got them all answered. I think we got everything straightened out, including adding some some um, expenditure for expenditures for payments to the picking in the park musicians. Um, and also thanks to Berkeley and to uh, Debbie Fowle and probably some others. So we got them all straightened out and all good to go for. Um, vouchers from September 25th through October 8th so I would ask for a move for approval so your your motion is approval do we have a second second, second from mr. Higginbotham any further discussion there being none all in favor please say aye. aye aye and that is unanimous and that's resolution 17 173 we come to the point where mayor we welcome your comments okay Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I did. We did manage to get a whole contingent of Homewoodians back from this uh, pleasure trip, so that's a good thing. Uh, Mr. Gwaltney? Nothing this evening. Okay. Mr. Thames, how many committees are you setting for? Well, um, I guess public safety and p and I'm not going to be here next Monday night, so um, I don't really care what time they meet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, I'm so glad that you recorded that. Thank you. <laughs> P, I would much rather be here. I'm going to be in Atlanta. Uh, P and D, I guess at 5 o'clock, there's just one item, so 15 minutes. And then I guess public safety. Well, wait, wait I think a minute. Mr. Hold Jones on. Let's stop. Mr. Finance for the foreseeable future is locked into 5 p.m. It's just not fair. <laughs> it, it's one of the perks of sitting on this end. Of it. <laughs> Listen closely. The, <laughs> That's right. The president <laughs> yeah. of the council approved this. Okay. So, okay. Well, um, well, how how Jones, long do you how think you're going to need, need this time, Mr. 30, Jones? 30 minutes from All right. 30 will get it. P, uh, P and D at 5:30, and then public safety at 5:45. Uh, looking at Patrick's agenda, he'll he'll need 30 minutes. Okay. Anything else uh, that you've got, Mr. Thames? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Higginbotham. I don't think I have. I just did. Mr. Wolverton? Uh, I don't have anything special. I just want to point out that Alex was referred to as lovely this evening, along with Barry earlier. Wait, what? What did he say? What did he say? <laughs> That's right. There could be a worse and, uh, thing. If I'm the one that said it, I'm sleep deprived. I'm glad it was on the record. Right. And I want to say happy birthday to Peter. Oh, thank you so much. There you go. Good. Mr. Jones. What <laughs> <laughs> happens when you get older? Your birthday uh, I'll see. Um, uh, welcome back. We, thank we you. missed you and I appreciate uh, hope you had a, means a good time. So, And uh, Mr. Wright, thank you for running the meetings very efficiently. Um, uh, we'll see. My son, Hill, turns 17 tomorrow. So. Uh, that's exciting for him. Uh, finance, as as we mentioned, is five is at five o'clock. So that's because of the board of education. So I apologize about that. And um, please don't. And let's see. I believe, I, bl I believe that's all I have tonight. I'm not going to give a football report. I, Good, Miss Smith. 
Um, I'll give the football report. <laughs> no, um, we beat uh, we beat um, John, John Carroll. Carroll last week, thirty-five to seven, uh, to uh, go six and zero. Oh. So we wow. have the Ramsey game coming up this Friday night at Waldrop Stadium. It is a big deal. They won state last year. Um, so we appreciate anybody supporting and coming out and watching the game. What, ta what time is that? Uh, the game starts at 7. 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, I will set uh, special issues for 615. I only have one referral uh, thing. I have a couple of carryovers, but I think we can probably do it in 15 minutes. Thank you. Mr. Wyatt? Nothing tonight. Ms. Andrews? Um, I would like to wish Mr. Wright a happy birthday, first of all. Um, I would like to invite everyone to this weekend on Sunday. Uh, the Homewood Arts Council will be presenting Pickin' in the Park as well as the Homemade <coughs> Art Show. Um, I know that we typically talk about the high school, but I did want to mention the middle school's cross-country teams. Um, they had the Jesse Owens meet this weekend. The boys are undefeated. They are the best of the Southeast. They have wow. won every single meet they have run. They have run against everybody in the state, and now they have run against Southwest, uh, Southeastern teams. The girls came in second for the first time ever um, and were the best Alabama team. They got beat by a team from Tennessee. Um, on the high school side, Will Stone won outright the entire meet for Homewood High School. So we want to wish him congratulations uh, once again, and that's all I have. Thanks, Ms. Andrews. Mr. Wright? I can't wait to get my son to the middle school so he can start running. <laughs> the poor soul doesn't have any choice now. All right, um, we'll take it. And if I could ever get my daughter to do it, to, uh, <laughs> that would be a miracle. She's a busy but, girl. She's um, a busy girl. She is. Um, thank you all for all the birthday wishes. and and reminding me that I'm getting older. Um, <laughs> um, Bruce, good to have you back. Thank um, you. We, uh, we are going to have public works. I'm easy to put at the, the end because this one may last. It may last 30 seconds. It may Hopefully last 15, 15 minutes. Hopefully so, not. Um, no, we want it to go So it's going to be between 30 seconds and 15 minutes um, would be fine. And, and what, what was the tail end? The tail end was 6.15 to 6.30. All right, 6.15, so. No, 6.30. 6.30. Oh. I said 6.15 to 6.30. 6.30. If, if uh, somehow I can determine that it's, I will we'll try to let everybody know. But, um, but just in case we make some progress on the sidewalk issue, um, yes. I'd like to go ahead and keep that meeting set. I uh, also wanted to remind everyone on October 24th at 8 o'clock, um, we've been, invited to um, school board for presentations on the right. 8 p.m. Um, recommendations and so everybody get their calendars and looking forward to that and moving forward on the school projects along with all the other projects that are underway and looking forward to, to see what what the uh, the options <clears throat> option that is available and in pursuit of it and improving the schools and I believe that's all I have so thank you thank you Mr. Wright, thank you so much for chairing two meetings, and in particular the annual budget meeting that uh, uh, tends to be um, uh, highly detail-minded, but I, I really appreciate you doing that. And uh, we are surrounded by good people in Homewood, and the proof of that sits on this dais and uh, in front of this dais. And uh, I just appreciate each and every one of y'all. And with that, we will stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.